Welcome back to part 9. In part 9 I plan to replace the floor, but I'm welding outside and the weather's been very wet to say the least, so I'm going to assemble the 7.5 inch Cooper disc brakes that I bought a while back. When my Mini was originally manufactured in 1981, it came with drum brakes on the front and rear as standard. At some point in the life of the Mini, the drums were changed for disc brakes designed for use with 12 inch wheels. On inspection there were several issues that were a safety concern, so I made the decision to replace everything for new so that I could be confident that everything was correctly fitted and in good working order. I planned to have the car running back on 10 inch wheels as the car I originally did from the factory, so it made sense to purchase the Mini Sport 7.5 inch Cooper S disc kit as they have been designed for use with the 10 inch wheels. A lot of people have been asking about the kit, so here it is all laid out and I'll go through everything that you get within the kit. I'm not a mechanic by any means but hopefully I've got all the names of the parts correct, but if I haven't, please let me know. So when you purchase the kit, here's what you get. Two Cooper S brake calipers, one for the front left wheel and one for the front right wheel. There's a pair of 7.5 inch Cooper S brake discs, a pair of 7.5 inch Cooper S drive flanges, 8 drive flange screws, left and right swivel hubs, outer CV joint kits for both sides including the rubber boot, wheel bearing kits, upper and lower ball joints, drive flange collars, left and right side steering arms, Mintex brake pads, steering arm bolts, caliper retaining bolts and spring washers, and four pins for holding the brake pads. Now I've never assembled a brake disc kit in my entire life, and to get this wrong is not only expensive, it's also potentially dangerous to myself and others. So Dennis at Classic Retro and Restorations has kindly offered to give me some guidance in putting the kit together, which will be a lot safer than me simply guessing where all the parts need to go. And what better place to assemble the kit than at Dennis's place itself, as there's a pretty good chance he'll have all the necessary tools to complete the job. Well it's Tuesday the 24th of March, and we've been told as of last night that in light of recent events, there's now only essential travel permitted. As much as I'd love to be assembling the brakes right now, that's obviously not essential travel. I also noticed that there's a couple of things that I need for the kit that wasn't included, so I'm also waiting on a delivery from Minisport for the parts that I'm missing. I do of course have the option to wait for a few weeks and see how events unfold, but I've been chatting with Dennis on the phone and got some great advice, and with everything being locked down for the next few weeks, I might now be able to fill some of my spare time having a go at assembling the kit myself. If I get really stuck, Dennis is fortunately just a first time call away, which is going to be really helpful. The mini forums have also been a great help, and of course there's always a Haynes manual. But I'm now thinking that providing I've got the right sockets and all the parts that I need, I'm feeling pretty confident that with a bit of guidance I'll be able to assemble the kit myself, but we'll see in part 2. In the meantime, stay safe everyone. Prior to making the videos on YouTube, I worked as a firefighter for nearly 20 years, serving my community and helping to save lives and promote the fire safety message. Unfortunately, an accumulation of many upsetting scenes became too much for my mind to cope with, and after years of failed therapy, I was retired from the service on the grounds of ill health and signed off medically from any employment. To keep myself busy, both body and mind, I developed an interest in woodworking and car mechanics, and with already having a hobby in filming and music, I combined my interests and started making videos here on YouTube, filming, editing, and composing my own music for my woodworking and car restoration channels, Smugwood and Smugwood Mini. Unfortunately, to produce such videos comes at a price, and with minimal funds after being retired from employment, I've turned to Patreon to see if there is additional support out there which could allow me to continue making the woodworking and car restoration videos. In return for support, there are various levels which are explained in more depth at the Patreon link below, but includes the chance to win one of my YouTube projects made throughout the year, and also inclusion into random prize draws open to patrons only. In addition, I'd like to thank everybody who already subscribes to my channels, or watches, comments, likes and shares them as it all goes to help support my channels, and for that I'm really appreciative. It's my hope that I can continue making the videos for the foreseeable future. Thanks once again for your continued support. 